This is uh, using jQuery with DevExpress ASP.NET controls. And in particular, part one. Well, what happened was I blithely thought this was going to be a piece of cake. And it turns out that when Mahal and I were um, organizing this webinar last week, we were discussing about various things we could show and uh, how things work. It turned out we had rather more than we could fit into uh, you know, 45 minutes plus questions. So don't despair, there's going to be a part two. Uh, we have to set it all up and um, yeah, get them registered with uh, GoToMeeting. Uh, but uh, be aware that this is just part one. So we'll be covering some uh, basic stuff in this particular webinar. And next time, we'll cover some more um, you know, hardcore stuff with the ASBX grid view and maybe the ASBX scheduler. We have so many different topics to talk about. So there may even be a part three. We'll see. Anyway, this time round, we're going to be basically uh, basically looking at the basics and I really wish to say danger there is lots of thin ice around with uh, mixing jQuery with uh, DevExpress controls. I'll talk about it um, in more detail as we go along uh, but be aware that we wrote the ASP.NET uh, control set way before jQuery was around so there are compatibility issues and we'll be covering what those compatibility issues may be and how you can get around them and so on and so forth. Um, last week, Mihul and I were talking with the ASP.NET team and we have some plans in 11.2 uh, to make this whole uh, story or these uh, scenarios much easier for you. So we're still discussing the ins and outs of those particular plans, so I can't really uh, tell you what we're going to be trying to do. Uh, but uh, be aware, for now, there is lots of thin ice. I'm going to show a couple of similar, simple animations uh, using jQuery and jQuery UI. And uh, we'll delve into a couple of more complex examples. Some of these are um, example programs on our Code Central site. Uh, so we'll we'll point those out, and next time, as I say, what we'll probably do is to concentrate on some really complex control, but that's next time. Okay, basics. jQuery. I suppose you could boil it down to two main uses. Um, there's finding elements on your HTML page on your DOM in your DOM, and um, there's doing something to those elements. Uh, you know, changing values and properties and attributes or whatever, um, some animations and what have you. So uh, I'm going to be looking at those two main areas with jQuery, uh, finding the elements uh, from uh, DevExpress ASP.NET controls, and as I say, just doing something with those elements. Now, I wish to point out that the DevExpress controls, as they stand, have uh, a lot of the same features as you'll get with jQuery. And uh, my recommendation here is if there's built-in support to do something, then I would recommend using that built-in support rather than trying to hack your way through um, you know, DevExpress uh, uh, event handlers calling jQuery and binding jQuery event handlers to DevExpress controls. Um, so just as a, a general thought there, um, if there is a feature there that we built into our ASP.NET controls, um, I would really recommend using that rather than um, you know trying to be all jQuery-like. Hey, Joy, so, let me jump in and add something. Yeah, sure, that. absolutely. Yeah. So, so uh, as you're explaining, like jQuery has some really excellent strengths, as you mentioned, about finding elements, uh, things like effects, animations, and so forth. The DevExpress client-side library was built to give you client-side API features that you interact with our controls. So in, in many ways, they can be complementary. However, as you mentioned, uh, Julian, that because we wrote this uh, you know, before jQuery was even around, um, there are things that you may not need to do, which is why, uh, as you suggested, Julian, it's better to you know go ahead and check the uh, client side API to see if something's already supported. Now, uh, if you're not sure, 
as to when to do this, you can always ask our support team. They'll be happy to help you figure out how to interact with uh, what you're trying to do with jQuery or even our client-side API. Absolutely. Thanks. The other thing I'd like to point out is that jQuery UI is a separate library from jQuery, um, and it adds a whole new can of worms to the whole story about using these modern um, open source libraries with our existing uh, DevExpress ASP.NET controls. With jQuery UI especially, uh, you can find yourself battling between what it wants to do and what our ASP.NET controls want to do. Um, a good example of this is um, issue number B144365, uh, where we talk about um, how uh, the jQuery UI interferes with uh, DevExpress um, controls. I can't remember what the exact control was uh, right off the top of my head, but it, um, it uses the sortable um, uh, API from jQuery UI and um, essentially some of our scripts get executed multiple times when you're doing that. And the reason is, obviously, um, when we wrote the original code, we weren't jQuery UI just didn't even exist, so um, I will put that beware straight up front. Uh, jQuery UI mixing with DevExpress uh, ASP.NET controls can cause you some issues, and uh, we'll see some ideas about how to get rid of those issues, uh, but I would really recommend you have a look at B144365 for an example of that. So the basic issue number one is um, we don't actually use a, our jQuery in our ASP.NET controls. Uh, so you've got to remember to add a script element uh, to your master page uh, to load it. Essentially, and here's uh, an example one um, that I've used in the past. Now, I believe, um, although saying our ASP.NET controls don't use jQuery, I think, Mihal, you were saying earlier on that uh, uh, before we started the webinar, that our M MVC extensions actually do. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So because we, we just started the MVC extensions last year, um, we had the opportunity to incorporate more of the jQuery. So what we did was we leveraged jQuery because it's now included with all MVC project types by default in Visual Studio 2010, and we're using it for the callback functionality. So while we have great callback functioning built in, we felt that we could use the jQuery to integrate it because it's already going to be uh, there for you. So, uh, so yeah, and as you mentioned, hopefully more later. Uh, just as an example of this, here's um, an ASP.NET website I've just started because I'm just going to do an example in a moment. And here's the, the line of code. Um, I actually have a local copy of jQuery 1.6.1, and this is in my uh, SiteMaster uh, page. Um, and I'm just adding this script to the header, to the head element, I should be more precise. So that's basic issue number one. If you forget that, your jQuery code is just not going to work, obviously. Basic issue number two is how do you find the right DOM element? We output um, a lot of HTML. Uh, we render a lot of HTML with our controls. The more complex the control, the more HTML we output. The reason for all this is obvious. Uh, when you look at a an application using DevExpress ASP.NET controls, you have all the support for um, you know, theming, for example. You have the support in the grid for uh, reordering columns, for uh, sorting columns, grouping by columns, all that kind of great stuff, which requires, unfortunately, uh, a lot of HTML to be rendered on the page. So within the, all that HTML, how the heck do you find the right DOM element that you can bind something to? So unfortunately, ASP.NET controls have a complex algorithm to name HTML elements, uh, give them their uh, unique IDs. IDs have to be unique, obviously. Um, and you could use uh, something like client instance name um, to help. Uh, we'll see an example of this in a minute. So that's the first big problem. How do you find the right DOM element to manipulate, or the right DOM elements to manipulate? Number three. 
when do you set up the bindings? Uh, normally you use, um, you know, in normal um, uh, client side uh, controls if you're writing everything from scratch manually, uh, you'd use something like jQuery document ready um, or jQuery some function to set up the bindings uh, between jQuery and the DOM elements at the point where the whole document has been loaded. Um, now, the problem about this is normally that's a, you know, you do that anyway. Uh, you can do that with our controls on the page as well. However, we do have some special initialization for ISV.NET controls, and that initialization may not actually be complete at document ready time. Uh, your code may get executed before our code has actually set up the right client side objects and uh, made them fully functional. Because if you remember what happens is with our ASP.NET controls, it's not only the HTML that's being rendered, but we set up some JavaScript objects which communicate between the client side and the server side. So there's not only the, the DOM set of uh, elements, there's also some jQuery objects uh, hanging around. And if you try and use the JavaScript object before it's fully initialized, you're going to get some weird errors. And this is just a, a big gotcha, um, is to try it out with uh, document ready. Uh, otherwise, certain, in certain cases, you may have to use the init event of the client side events uh, to set up your bindings. So just be warned. That's one of the gotchas. Number four. Um, there is nowadays um, a big push for unobtrusive JavaScript um, versus the obtrusive kind. Um, a quick definition of this is um, keeping JavaScript code out of the HTML page. Now that could just be script elements. It could also be things like adding bindings to on click or on focus or those kind of events. Um, in the grid, for example, as we'll see, uh, we'll sometimes bind JavaScript directly to the event. Um, so the event handler is actually described uh, within the HTML page. Uh, so we use obtrusive JavaScript, that was the old style if you like, uh, the more modern uh, up-to-date style is to use unobtrusive JavaScript and I will point out that not many people use unobtrusive JavaScript. It's uh, kind of weird when you first see it, um, you wonder how this page is ever going to work. Um, so you'll find that if you, you know, browse through various websites, uh, whether they use our controls or not, um, not many people use unobtrusive JavaScript. So just be aware of this uh, is my, my thought here. Basic issues number five, sometimes um, you'll lose your jQuery bindings uh, after a callback. So if you set up a, a nice jQuery binding to do some animation, for example, um, and then the control that's being used uh, does some kind of callback, um, you may find that your binding just gets lost. The reason is uh, the DevExpress controls will rebuild parts of the DOM after a callback. So if you imagine, for example, you're looking at uh, ASPX grid view and you page down, what's actually going to happen there is part of the DOM is going to get rebuilt uh, to display the second page. Um, so all of your carefully crafted bindings to uh, the elements on the first page are going to basically disappear. Um, so an example of this is um, E3324. Uh, what this shows is how to set up your bindings after some callback occurs. So basically you're going to reset your bindings after a callback occurs. Um, so just be aware of this. Um, it can happen. And um, the only way to find out if it does happen is obviously to test and test and test again. So those are the uh, five basic issues that I identified or that we identified last week. Um, there are probably others as well, but those are the, the kind of real elementary ones that everybody's going to um, hit at some point. So let's let's show a quick simple example here that shows off some of these uh, 
uh, these problem areas. I'm going to drop a text box, a label, and a button on a form. And basically, clicking the button will post the entered text to the label and refresh the page. I'm not going to use callbacks here because um, I'm old school. Uh, I'm going to use postback, and it's it's a very simple little little program. But using jQuery, what I'm going to do is, if the text box is empty, I'm going to show the string entered data in it. And if the text box gains the focus and is empty, I'm going to remove that text. So it's like those uh, login uh, pages that you see where uh, the, the text box for the uh, user ID actually says user ID or enter user ID or something like that. The text box for the password actually says enter password and so on. But as soon as you click on that text box, that text disappears and you're, you're ready to type it in. So if the text box has a value, just show the value. So let's, let's see this demo. It's uh, nice and simple, uh, but we'll get some, some great ideas about what's going on. So here's all I've done so far is to create a, um, a new ASP.NET web application. I've added the script um, element to the head element in the site master. So uh, that's the end of that. And in my, um, uh, this is the standard ASP.NET um, uh, default page, I don't need it, I don't care, and I'm just going to basically drop on some, um, some simple controls here. So I need a, a text box, drag that on, and um, I need a label. Uh, so back to, let me uh, nail this in there, that'll be easier. So I need a label, add that in, and uh, finally a button. Uh, we're going to add that in. Now, what I'm going to show first of all is uh, how to approach, or this is the way I've discovered how to approach adding jQuery to an existing page. So I've got an existing page here, and I can run the page, and nothing's actually going to happen with the page, obviously. Uh, but um, at least we can see what the page is going to look like. It's going to produce a, hang on, let me drag Firefox over here. So here it is. I have a yeah, text box, a label, um, a button, which doesn't look like a button. Seems a bit weird. What did I do? Let's uh, switch back to and hmm, bizarre. Oh, maybe I need an on-click handler. Let's add an on-click handler to it. Yeah, oh, that's okay. All right. Now, um, let's close off that and start it again. I'm not quite sure why my button is not showing up as a button. Oh, there we go. So it did need an on click handler. Big deal. Hey, okay, so there we are. Sure, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you real quick. Um, generally what happens is when you're in the design view, uh, when you add any code, we don't do any checks. So when you, I'm sorry, when you're in the source view and when you go to design oh. view, then it kicks off a check and says, oh, you need this, it modifies uh. your web config to add the handlers, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just a little bit of thing. We're actually going to be changing this in the future to provide web forms project templates like we have for MVC project templates. Oh yeah, good point. Okay, thanks, Michael. Okay, so we have a, a nice little application here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is actually have a look at the source code for this application. Um, the reason is I want to see what kind of HTML has been rendered for these three basic controls, text box, label, and the button. So here's the text box uh, here. And then we have uh, the label. Oh, there's the button. Here's the label. So that's the kind of uh, HTML we output there. And here's the uh, the button. Um, the reason it's in a table is to provide uh, a better look and feel to the to the whole um, uh, to the controls essentially. Now with the text box, it's it's a bit complicated. Um, I didn't change the name of the text box at all. 
So the ID that's been generated for me for the uh, quote text box unquote is this ID, but it's not actually the input field. This is just the surrounding container for the input field. Here's the input field itself, and it has this bizarre long ID, which is basically the same ID plus I uh, underscore I at the end. And this is the first problem that you have to solve when um, using jQuery is how the heck do you find this particular um, value for the ID? Um, I want to bind to this element, but I've got to find it first. So I need the input element. I don't need all the, uh, in my jQuery code, in my JavaScript code, I don't need all of the surrounding container code. I just need this particular input field. So the very first thing I'd like to point out is it's probably easier to set up the structure of the HTML page, look at what gets generated, thereby you can start identifying the uh, elements that you want to pick out. It's easier to work that out when you have a working uh, page rather than a, you know, just doing it theoretically, shall we say. So let's, let's go back to um, our, um, our application here. So let's go back to the source. What I need to do now is to add some code uh, to identify the text box and do some clever stuff once the, um, actually let's, before we do that I might as well add the code for here and then all I'm going to do is ASPX, um, yeah, label dot text, yeah I can't type today, um, is equal to the um, uh, text box text and then we need to set that to the empty string. That's all I'm going to do on my um, my click event handler on the server side is to copy what's in the text box onto the label and then set the text box to blank. So that's the end of that. So we can actually run that now and see if it's actually working. So if I add some text here, click that, and notice the label gets changed. Add some other text. That's that's a simple example of what this this application does. Uh, let's clear both of those and go back to my HTML, the source code of it. I've got some code over here that I'm going to copy over rather than um, you have me um, me have you watch what I do which is going to be extremely boring. So let me just grab this script. Okay, and bring it over here. So, <clears throat> I'm embedding this script inside the HTML page. So um, ASP.NET will uh, gladly fill in some markup for me. And this is the markup I'm going to be grabbing. I'm basically having a look at uh, text box ID. Hang on a minute. Uh, sorry, I'm just checking my notes here. Let me essentially let's take all this other stuff out. So here what I'm doing is I'm using ASP.NET to tell me what the client ID of the text box one control is. So I can do this for example just to see what it looks like. And uh, if we run this now, oh, I'm still, um, still in debugging here, silly me. Okay, we don't need to see that anymore. So that's the name of the quote text box control unquote. And as we saw in the source code, that's actually the container holding the input field. So that's, we're not quite there yet. Um, so the next next thing we have to uh, sort out is uh, let's close that um, is to oops, add some other code to grab.
the container and from the container we need to find the input field. So this is just, just one way of doing it. So let's take out the alert. So grabbing the container, we've got the ID of the container now. So this is we're into JavaScript now, uh, sorry, jQuery now. We're going to append hash to it because it's an ID. Uh, grab the container. And then I'm going to basically take the container and get the actual input field, which I'm just going to call text box for now. And um, text box container dot find, which is a, J a jQuery, and we need to find. Um, oops, this has to be. A, we need to find this element inside that container. Now, at the end of that, the text box will contain the jQuery object for the text box itself, the uh, input field itself, I should say. Okay, and now we can do some uh, clever stuff and uh, bind some code. As I say, I don't particularly want to type all this out, so. All right. So I'm going to declare some variable saying the text box is empty. Uh, here's a function which sets the value when it's empty. Um, if it has a value, then it's not empty. If it does have a val if it doesn't have a value, then it's empty. Yes, and I'm going to set its value to enter data, and then I'm going to bind my scroll wheel is all really wacky today. And then I'm going to bind on focus a function which says if empty, then set the value to empty, in other words, remove the enter data thing. And then I'm going to bind the blur event, which is the uh, unfocus event, if you like, um, for JavaScript or for the DOM. And I'm going to set that to, um, I'm going to call this this function, basically, uh, which I just declared above. And I have to do it right away. So that's that's all my code inside the document ready function. Let's uh, Let's now run it and see if it works. So straight away we have enter data. If I click on that uh, text box like here, the that goes away. Uh, if I tab out of it, uh, it comes back. So my focus and blur event handlers are working just fine. Now if I type some, some stuff in there, I can then click on the button. And as I, as I showed you, the server will actually replace the labels text and set the text box text to blank, in which case I see enter data again. So, so it all nicely works. So that's just the basic example of using jQuery with a, uh, a few uh, DevExpress ASP.NET controls. So just to, uh, we don't need to uh, keep that running. So we've seen how to identify um, certain elements in ASPX page created with ASP.NET our ASP.NET controls and how to add event handlers to those required elements. So it's by using the ASP.NET trick of having some uh, markup which is evaluated by the server as it renders this page. Now that is kind of icky, sorry, you know, having to rely on ASP.NET to do our work for us. What else can we do? Um, here's a, a little uh, change that I made when I was doing some more research, and it involves basically setting the client side, uh, whoops, wrong place. It involves setting the uh, client side, what's it called? The client instance name. This is the JavaScript object, the name of the JavaScript object that uh, our ASP.NET controls create, our, our infrastructure code creates. So if I set that to my text box, for example, oops, there we go. And then, um, so my client instance name is my text box. So if I go back over here, 
take all this stuff out, I can replace the code with this. So my text box is going to be a global JavaScript object on, on window. So I'll be able to find it. And then I can call uh, a bit of uh, our own client side uh, scripting called get input element, which will return the input element of that text box. And then I wrap it inside, um, I make a call that re returns a DOM element essentially. So I need to wrap that inside a jQuery object by calling uh, jQuery on it. And that will give me an object which I can then use um, within my code here. So this is just a, a, another way of doing it. Um, it's possibly a, a better way of doing it, actually. So again, uh, binding set up OK. Enter data appears on an empty box. I can press Enter. Enter data reappears. I can click on it, maybe tab out. And things are working extremely well. So that's just an alternative way of finding the DOM element for uh, one of our ASP.NET controls. Have a look at our client-side code, our client-side API, and see whether you can get at it immediately. And here I don't, I'm no longer relying on uh, ASP.NET doing anything for me um, in the sense of you know, um, evaluating some uh, markup for me. I can do it directly inside JavaScript. So that's the first um, example. So let's go back to um, that's the first little demo. Now I'm going to add a little bit of animation. We're going to take this previous example we just had and make the label glow momentarily when it's first shown. Glow mean you know, basically change the background color and make it flash, if you like, in a in a nice manner. This example is actually going to use some very basic jQuery UI, jQuery UI functionality. Um, we're going to uh, possibly see some more in-depth uh, jQuery UI. Uh, in essence, jQuery itself and its animations allow you to uh, animate um, numeric values. Uh, but here, I'm going to be changing the color, the background color and the, uh, the foreground color. And that requires jQuery UI. It's not part of the standard jQuery. So that's the only thing I'm going to basically change is the ability to animate colors. So uh, go back to our demo. Uh, here we are. Uh, oh, we're still running, so kill that. So what I'm going to do now is add um, some extra code underneath here uh, to animate the label. Oh, first thing, yes, duh. I need to go to my site master. I need to add um, jQuery UI um, as a script element. And there we are. Again, it's a local copy. Uh, jQuery UI is, is kind of bizarre because you generate your own JavaScript file for jQuery UI. Um, you basically go to their website, you say, OK, I want to use these controls, generate me the JavaScript for it, and it generates a unique um, bit of JavaScript which just uses those controls. So you don't have to load the whole of jQuery UI if you just want to use a little bit of it. Um, this is just my um, custom. Um, minimal JavaScript for 1.813. Um, it has enough for me to do this particular um, demo. So back to here. Let me go grab some some color and some um, code here. Dum -ba -dum. Uh, where are we? Just need that much code. And then I'll explain what I'm doing. So um, back to the old, let's find the uh, client ID, let ASP.NET fill in this particular bit of markup with the right value. I'm going to create, get the label ID. I'm going to get the actual label itself using uh, jQuery, um, and basically finding the ID. So I have now a jQuery object called label. Um, I'm going to get the original background color because I'm going to flash it into a different color and fade it back out again. So I need the current background color, which is this bit of jQuery code. 
and um, the original foreground color, which is you know, this bit of code. So label.css background color and label.css color. Standard jQuery manipulation of getting attributes. So here we go into our uh, label. Now remember, I'm doing postbacks here, so I don't have to worry about you know, what happens during a callback. Um, I'm just making this as simple as I can. Um, if the label has some value, if there is some uh, text within the label, um, that's what this if statement is doing, then I'm going to animate the label, standard jQuery thing. Um, I'm going to be changing these CSS values, or uh, this is basically a CSS options uh, hash. Um, it's going to have background color of some nice pink, actually I think it's melon, um, and the foreground color to white, and I'm going to change that uh, background color and color to um, uh, to these values over two seconds, and when it finishes, I'm going to run another function, which is going to animate the background color and the uh, color, for, uh, the font color, uh, back to their original values over half a second. So a bit of a complicated uh, piece of JavaScript here, but in essence, I'm going to animate. Uh, to one value, then when that's finished, I'm going to animate back to the original values, uh, color values. Let's run it. Here we are. Do you see that flashing? I want to set that to, uh, let's kill this. Got lots of home pages here. Um, let's go back and um, I can't remember what the Oh yeah, here it is. I don't need this text at all. There we go. Now we can run it. Oh, Shift F5, F5. Okay, so there's no data in the label. So let me add some data. Hello world. Click the button. And we see the nice little fade effect and it goes back to the standard look and feel. So that's simple animation using jQuery and jQuery UI in this in this particular case. Um, so we see it. Did I click? No, I didn't. We fade it and fade it back. So over two seconds, we fade it into you know white on melon, and then fade it back to the standard um, kind of grayish color on white. So. Pretty, pretty simple, um, about as simple as I could think of uh, for doing this. And um, as you see, um, this is the kind of thing that happens, um, I feel, um, or the simplest thing you can do uh, with jQuery and our DevExpress controls. Now, Next one is um, a kind of harder example, I suppose, and this one I'm going to uh, switch over to Mihul, uh, who will demonstrate it on his screen. So allow us a, a quick couple of seconds to switch uh, PCs here, and then Mihul will show you another example of using jQuery. Um, I think it's with the ASVX grid view, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so, so it's this example. Awesome. All right, let me change to my screen here. Okay. Okay, so can everyone see my screen all right? Yes, yes. okay. The, this example that I'm going to show, I don't remember if it was uh, someone asking in the forums or not, but it, it was a, it, it's really a, kind of a slick idea. Um, if, you, if you've ever heard of the yellow fading technique, what it is, it's something that uh, this company called 37 Signals, uh, I think first pioneered back in, uh, what was it, like 2004 or something like that. And the idea is pretty simple. Let's say you're editing something. Say, for example, we're going to edit this CEO's photo or something like that or the text, right? Once we make the change, what we want to do is we want to highlight this change has been made. So it's similar to what Julian just showed with the 
animation example, but it, it's it's actually called something else in jQuery. It's an if it's an effect and not necessarily animation, and it's built into the jQuery UI. So this is a highlight. So what we're going to do is use this. Now to do this, uh, I've got a little project, and first I should show you what exactly uh, this looks like from the uh, jQuery site. So if you go to uh, the, the documents for jQuery, they have lots of great little examples and source code and so forth. And the idea is pretty simple. When we do something, we want this effect to take place given a certain set of milliseconds. So here, this div, when I click on it, it's going to run the highlight effect for a few milliseconds. So now when I click it, we can see that it, it's highlighted, but then it fades nicely back out. Now, if you ever used uh, Stack Overflow, you probably have seen this when you create an answer. Your answer will first have this, uh, as soon as you save it, will, will be highlighted and then fade right back out. So what do we need to add this? So there's a dependency on the effects core. Now, I don't want to get too much into what's required for jQuery. In essence, you know, jQuery has the main jQuery file, but if you use anything for the UI, you, you'll have to add those items in there. So the, the best way to do it, and I think Julian explained this before, is uh, you can get it right from the jQuery site. Now, I'm going to cheat, but I will show you how to get at that. So jQuery UI has a jQueryUI.com slash download, and here you can go and uh, build a bunch of things. So for example, for this, I probably want it really light because I don't need any themes. I don't really need anything from the core. What I do need is the highlight effect. Now it's smart enough to know that when I grab this, it needs the effects core as well, and then I can click download and grab uh, the version that I want. But as I said, I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm just going to use the Google CDN version. Google has kindly hosted these things on their servers and we can just simply reference them from the script tags. So let's get into it. Now, uh, for the sake of time, I've created a so small sample project here. It's just a simple website. All it has is an HTTP screen view on it that's bound to a local Northwind access database and it's just connecting to the employees table. And um, I haven't really done any coding to this, so there's no code behind in this at all. Um, in fact, the only thing I've done is enable things like editing, inserting, and deleting. So let's just take a quick look at this in action. Now, when I click edit and I click update, nothing happens. Well, in the sense that nothing uh, more than uh, that I wanted to happen. So what, what I want to do is I want to use that little sort of animation or effect that says, hey, here's the row that you just changed and give it an emphasis to let the user know, hey, you've just updated this row. So to do this, what I'm going to have to do is uh, first I know what event I want to add it to and then figure out how to, how to find that item on the page as well as add the code to it. So in essence, I know when I click this update button is when I want it to occur. Now, uh, Julian was using uh, Firefox, so I'll actually use Chrome because Chrome has some uh, interesting tools built in. So if I right click on something and I select inspect element, I can actually, let's do this again, inspect element. I can take a look at all of the code and items on there. So let me just do a little split screen here. Now there's a Firebug um, plugin for, for this as well. So here, let's make this a little bit bigger. So here, I, I am inspecting the update button. Now, when I look at the update button, I know that it's a um, it's a hyperlink, and it's within this column of this table. Now, this table I know has this ID. So there's several ways I can try to get at this. Now, one of the hardest things, at least for me in jQuery, is trying to figure out how to get at the element that I want. So uh, I'll show you just a little bit, but this is one of the ways you can kind of try to take a look and see, well, how do I get at the element that I want? So if you just you know scroll over some things, you, you'll get the 
uh, specific element name in, in the class that's being used on it. So that's one way you might be able to get at it. Or if you know the specific ID that Julian was using earlier, the client ID, then that's another way you can get at it. And once you have that, then jQuery can do all sorts of things to it, like animate it or give it some special effects. So let's go into the source. The first thing we're going to need to do is actually in, have uh, jQuery in here. So if you don't have jQuery, you can you can do a simple thing like uh, I'm going to use NuGet. So if you go to Tools, Library, Package Manager, Package Manager, Console, you can do something like install package, and I just hit install space space tab, and type in jQuery. And what it'll do is it'll create a scripts folder and add the latest jQuery in here. Now that's fine and dandy, but as I mentioned, I'm totally going to cheat and use the CDN versions. So let me go and grab these. And CDN basically means Content uh, Delivery Network, and it, it's a it's a way to actually get performance in your in your websites because uh, the request is not being made to your server. So this is one of those Yahoo best practices that says reducing the number of requests. Well, this is one way you can do it. However, you want to be careful and use a CDN that's reliable because you're now relying on an external third party. So uh, unless you have some sort of um, uh, Amazon or Microsoft Cloud Services in the Azure space, just be careful. So, However, jQuery is pretty popular, so you can rest assured this will probably work. So here, I'm referencing the jQuery UI uh, CSS file, the minified 1.5 version and the jQuery UI 1.8 version. Now I don't really need this, so I'm going to uninstall the local version since it's not really necessary, and I'll just remove it. Now I have a reference to the jQuery UI files, but I'm not really doing anything with them. So let's first start with adding a script. Now, I won't do a whole bunch of typing, but I will show you, uh, in essence, what we want to do. So the first thing we want to do is figure out what element we want to get at. And I've cheated a little bit, and but I will show you. So let's just run this really quick. Um, first thing I'll do is I will use the new IS Express. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned this on my blog yet or not, but we now support IIS Express with VS 2010. Oops, Let me give it just a sec while it loads up. By the way, if you're at all curious, Julian has a bunch of other uh, webinars on this topic. So he's actually done even a webinar specifically on jQuery, uh, I think parts one and two, where he actually looks at the source code of jQuery. And you can find that on our website, uh, tv.devexpress.com. All right, let's see, this is back now. So let's take a look at this in action. Now, when I click edit and I inspect this element, as I mentioned, I have several items that I can get at it. Now, as I said, for myself, I, I know specifically what I want to update. And I want to update this row once I click the edit uh, item. So this is the edit form that's generated for me automatically. And if you take a look, you'll, you'll find that there is one of the cat one of the CSS classes that we're using. It's called Edit Form Table, and that's what I'll use. Now I'm going to use a little bit of some advanced JavaScript in the sense that um, it, it's a the selector is probably not something you may be used to, and there's lots of great text out there that I do recommend that that you read on how to get more accustomed to this. So I'm going to use the the dollar sign obviously is the document dot ready short call and table, and then I'm doing a filter where it says find me where the class is equal to the edit form table. So I said basically give me this table where it's the edit form table. That item when you click edit, that's being displayed. And now I'm going to further refine this by using 
a find on it. And I'm going to say, give me the hyperlink that contains the word update. And, all, and when I find this element, I want to add the click event handler. So when it's being clicked, I want it to do something. So here, I'm going to create the uh, function that basically says that I'm going to highlight the row. Now, to highlight the row, um, I'm, I'm going to need a variable. So what I'm what I'll first do is the reason is um, we we can't we should not actually get at that element directly on its own click. What I want to do is I want to do it when the update has finished because the update is doing something special. So let me just show you really quickly. What happens is our grid view does everything via callbacks. So when I click this hyperlink, it's actually doing a callback to the server that says, okay, update the values and so forth. So I don't want to mess with that. What I want to do is say, hey, when that callback is finished, then run this other effect, which is to highlight. So the SPS script view gives us a really nice function, uh, client-side API, that lets us do things like attach to certain client-side events. So if you go to the um, design view and click on the smart tag and go to the client-side events editor, on the end callback, we can add a new function. So here, I'm going to just create something called on-grid callback, which I actually haven't defined yet, but I know that uh, I will be, so I'll click OK. Now, when it, whenever a callback finishes, then we're going to run a particular piece of code, and that code will be in this on-grid callback. So let's go ahead and define this. So on good callback, the first thing I'm going to need is a something that gets and holds the value of the edited row. I'll call it edited row selector. Initially, I'll set it to null. And here, I'm going to check if the edited row selector if it exists, meaning that if it has if it's a true value and it's not null, then I'm going to add the effect to it. So here, now I can run some jQuery and says, okay, the edited row selector, I want to add an effect to it, and it's the highlight effect. Now, as I mentioned, uh, you, there's a lot of great documentation on on the actual jQuery site, and let's just simply go back, and you can see all of the different options for it. So we're going to do exactly what this uh, little document API does. Let's do it for three thousand. Just a quick one. You've got too many close parentheses there. Ah. After highlight, you've got to close parentheses. Thank you. <coughs> And finally, I'm going to set the editor rule selector equal to null because now that I run the effect, I don't want to do it. I don't want to keep that value, so I want to set it back to null. So here, I need to capture this edited rule selector. So let's do that. And the way we're going to get at it is um, a little bit of JavaScript, a little bit of knowing the ID. So pound references the ID, and what we're going to do is say get me the table row where the class is equal to a specific name so give me one second dsgv edit form display row and this is the item that that we had just edited so this is the row that we had selected for edit and now we had a reference to it that will pass so that we can hit the highlight effect for. Now I'm going to actually use another jQuery item called attr attribute 
and I'm going to grab one of its attributes called ID. So this, let's use some more quotes. This will give me the specific ID, and I'm adding the pound symbol so that jQuery can reference it when it does a document.writeID against the selector. So now we have all of the items hooked up. Just to recap, what we're doing here is saying when a callback is finished on the ASPX grid view, meaning that when I click the update, I want it to go and see if there's an editor row selector. And if there is, then add the highlight effect to it. All right, so let's take a quick look at this. All right, um, I th one other thing. On the callback, um, this editor role selector will probably never get called until we actually call this. So a good place to actually figure out when to call this is at the end of the callback. All right, so now that we're hooked up, let's take a look at this in action. All right, now let's click the this row. We'll do something like one, three, two, four. Now, when I clicked update, we have that nice little effect. And every time I click update, I get that nice little highlight to let the user know which row they've edited. Okay, that's all for me, Julian. I will pass it back over to you. Thanks, Michael. Let me, uh, sure. let me grab the presenter and I'll show my screen. Okay. So that was uh, uh, a harder example, if you like, uh, where we actually saw um, using um, Chrome's object inspector to, or element inspector, I should say, to find out what's happening on the page before we add our jQuery JavaScript code. Um, I showed you basically by just looking at the page source and Mihul did a more advanced way of doing it. And obviously you can use Firebug within Firefox to do exactly the same kind of way. So I, I want to re-emphasize that is it's much easier to add functionality using jQuery once you know what the basic page actually does and what things are named and how they're structured. It's uh, a lot easier than trying to reason about it theoretically. So we have some interesting jQuery examples on our uh, Code Central site. Um, our support team add them regularly based on uh, user input. Um, so if you have some, some ideas that you want to explore, by all means send a, a message to support and uh, we'll see what we can do to add those to Code Central. Some interesting ones here are E3324, uh, which allows you uh, or see how to bind jQuery to data cells. This particular example shows you that you know, once uh, you get the result of a callback, your bindings have all disappeared, so it shows you a way of rebinding everything uh, once you get the callback over. Uh, 3325 um, is a nice little example showing how to add the uh, jQuery autocomplete um, um, what's the word I'm for? control to our ASPX text box. Uh, E1810 uh, is kind of a nifty one, uh, drag and drop from one ASPX grid view to another one using uh, jQuery UI. So it uses draggable and droppable from jQuery UI. So there's some, some examples there uh, for you know, do some rather um, more interesting uh, things than uh, what we've showed you so far. Although I, I do kind of like the, the highlight a row effect. Uh, that's, that's kind of fun. So that's it from us this time. As I said, um, we actually found a lot more to talk about, which we'll talk about next time, and uh, we've just about run out of uh, examples. Um, so um, I'm just looking at our question page here. I think we've just about answered everything as we were talking. Um, there was one question from Chris Miller that I promised we will address. It's about the patch jQuery, and he asks oh, yeah. uh, he needs it now. So I, I said the short answer is for now, yes, uh, but I think you mentioned that maybe, you know, 
we're looking into it, right? I mean, did you want to add anything to that? Uh, yeah, patch jQuery is um, it's a kind of a workaround thing. Um, as far as I can see, what's happening is uh, we're duplicating some kind of container and we're duplicating the, the scripts within that container, which means the scripts get executed many times. Um, that, of course, causes utter problems with our um, our code which creates jQuery objects. We, we're reinitializing the objects all over the place. Um, so the patch jQuery code avoids that problem. Um, I'm going to do a bit of research on this myself just to, to play around and uh, understand the problem better um, and see whether there's another way of uh, getting around um, this particular interaction between jQuery, uh, or rather it's actually jQuery UI and um, uh, our Dev Express ASP.NET controls. Uh, maybe if I find some, some great answers, we'll, we'll talk about that in part two. Um, it's 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 one of those problem areas that I pointed out right at the beginning. Uh, jQuery UI has its own particular way of um, displaying controls on uh, your web page, and uh, we have our way of displaying controls on the web page. And sometimes when you mix the two, you you'll have these kind of issues. So Chris, um, stay with us, um, and I'll be doing some research and talking about it uh, probably uh, either in the next one or the one after that. Um, anything else? Uh, what would be the best way to call? Yeah, I'm just reading it. What would be the best way to call ASPX editors set enabled client side method using jQuery selectors? Oh, best is replied. Christy, I think, is a question based on another question. Can we expect some jQuery behavior styles added to your components, like being draggable and docking? As I mentioned right at the beginning of this, uh, this webinar, um, Mihul and I were talking with the ASB.NET team about what's going to occur in 11.2. And one of the ideas we're investigating is going to require a spike uh, and a, a bit of research is to add some kind of jQuery-like functionality to our controls. Um, wrapping our controls in some kind of jQuery-like uh, syntax rather than our current API. Now, that's going to require some investigation as to how much work it's going to be, um, what it's going to look like, and um, you know how much we can do for 11.2, and then there's all the documentation, testing, and so on and so forth. So stay tuned. I don't have any great answers right now. Uh, but it's something that we're going to be looking into for 11.2, which is due in November, December time frame. If we're using a DevExpress client-side function, uh, function SE, how do we reach the S value via jQuery? Um, probably the easiest answer is to just call jQuery on the S value, I would say. So dollar open parenthesis S close parenthesis. Um, I'd have to do a bit of research and see if whether that actually works. So yeah, you know, basically the S and E is the it's kind of like the equivalent on the server side. It's basically the sender and the event args. Right. And right. if you if you have a sender on the client side, most likely it has an ID property, right? Mm. And if you can get at that ID property, then I think it's it. actually, oh yeah, maybe, oh yeah, so it's, okay, the S is going to be our JavaScript object, so, so yes, find out the, either the DOM object from our JavaScript object, uh, which is doable via the ID property, for example, so create your own selector based on that, uh, it's possibly the easiest answer, or I can't remember whether we expose the DOM element inside our um, JavaScript objects through some uh, method. Not that I know of, but okay. it, it, it will be in the DOM itself, right? So, like you uh, were showing with the text box, it, there, there's a client version of that text box call, called ASPX client text box, hmm. and whatever client instance name you gave it is what probably sender okay. will be. So let's say you're in the click client side event of 
ASPX text box, then S would basically reference that yeah. text see. box on the client side. Okay. Hope that helps. We'll do some experimenting, uh, Jerry, and um, see what we come up with. Um, I'll I'll be writing a blog post um, to um, to go over what we discussed today in this webinar, and we'll post it on the uh, I'll post it on the CTO DX uh, blog site. Um, maybe you are totally moving to Silverlight interfaces, and jQuery won't be important soon. <laughs> Christy, <laughs> nice try, Christy. <laughs> we support both Silverlight and. Um, uh, ASP.NET, ASP.NET MVC, we're not abandoning one for any other. So, nice try, not happening. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, somebody asked about if we'll post, put this uh, ASPS grid view sample on Code Central. We will, and I will be blogging about it soon, so you, you'll yeah. have access to all the code too. Cool, brilliant. Okay, well, we're, we're slightly over time, and I think we've answered all the questions, uh, either that or uh, Vest in our support team has answered some of them. Thanks, Vest, for helping out, and I think that's it. Amanda, it's all yours. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Julian and Mahul. All right, everybody, we have a whole lineup of webinars posted for the months of June and July. Check them out and register at devexpress.com slash webinars. Coming up this week, we have a lot coming up. Tomorrow, Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Mahul is back to present Introducing the ASP.NET Docking Suite. In this webinar, learn how to use the new ASP.NET well, ASP Docking Suite, and we'll cover how to set up the new Docking Suite and more. Also tomorrow at noon Pacific Standard Time, Advanced Code Rush Plugins, Creating Custom Code Issues with Mark Miller and Rory Becker. They show how to create custom code issues that reveal potential problem areas in code that might need a developer's attention. Wednesday at 10 a.m., 11.1 .1 Reporting Preview, New WPF Features with Reporting Evangelist Seth Juarez. This webinar will explore several new reporting features added to WPF in our version 2011.1 release. These additions include new shortcuts, events, and preview features that will enrich your already powerful WPF reporting tool set. And Thursday, 10 a.m., building a scrolling tile engine with XMA on Windows Phone. This webinar shows basic techniques for creating games that use a scrolling tiled map. Displaying sprites, 2D graphics is also covered, and that's with uh, XNA MVP Chris G. Williams. And then finally, Friday, working with the state machine module with XAF evangelist Apostolos Bechiaris. In this session, we'll demonstrate how to take advantage of the module in our project management application. And that's what's coming up this week. And again, you can register for those at devexpress.com slash webinars. And again, if you missed anything from this webinar or you want to uh, review any of those previous webinars on jQuery with Julian or check out hundreds of online product tutorials, you can visit us on the DevExpress channel at tv.devexpress.com. Again, thanks to Julian and Mahul. Thank you all for joining us, and thanks for choosing DevExpress.